What's going on guys, it's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef.com and today we're going to be talking about cycling fish tanks. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef.com and today we're going to be getting the 220 gallon aquarium cycled. And we're going to talk about a couple different ways that you can go about cycling an aquarium before we get into how I cycled this aquarium. All right, so I put a little PowerPoint together to talk about cycling a fish tank. And this is going to be not just for saltwater aquarium people, but it's also going to be for freshwater aquarium people as well. So how do you cycle a fish tank? Well, we're going to talk about five different ways you can cycle both a freshwater and saltwater aquarium. The first one is adding a hardy fish to the aquarium, one that's going to survive and not die. Some of the drawbacks, it's not 100% successful, and it really is just unnecessary and cruel to the fish. There's better ways to cycle an aquarium. The second method to cycling an aquarium is adding shrimp from the grocery store to the aquarium, allowing it to decay and break down in the aquarium. This causes a mess, and it also creates a pretty bad smell in the area where the aquarium is as it cycles. The third method is adding a used filter or substrate from a already established aquarium. And this is really something that has came out of the freshwater end of the hobby. And it's a poor choice because what can happen is you're introducing pests and nuisance allergy into your aquarium right from the get-go, which puts you off to a very poor start right from the beginning. The fourth method of cycling an aquarium that we're talking about today is phantom feeding. And what this is is basically feeding an aquarium with fish food without any fish in there. And the problem with this is it introduces a lot of phosphates into the aquarium because of the amount of food that you have to add to the tank for it to begin cycling. Another issue with phantom feeding is it takes a long time to get the cycle going. Much like the other three methods that we've talked about, it can take upwards of four to six weeks to cycle an aquarium. The last method of cycling that we're gonna talk about today is fishless cycling. Now this is something that's relatively new to me. I've used it on the last three aquariums that I've put up. And it is the fastest way to cycle an aquarium. The fastest I've cycled an aquarium using the fishless method is five days. And this is the product that I used. Dr. Tim's Aquatics, one and only. And what you're doing with this is you're adding live nitrifying bacteria straight to the aquarium. So it's cutting the cycling down to a week instead of having an aquarium sitting there doing nothing for an entire month. And the great thing about this is Dr. Tim's Aquatics not only has a saltwater aquarium product, but they have a freshwater aquarium product as well. And it's virtually the same method. You take the bottle, you shake it up, and you add it to the aquarium. And it should be cloudy like this. You want it to be cloudy like like this because that's telling you it's working and the bacteria cultures are alive and well now you can't just add the dr tim's aquatics one and only to the aquarium you will have to give the bacteria some type of food and the food that this bacteria needs to consume is ammonium chloride and when you purchase your bottle of one and only, Dr. Tim's Aquatics will actually give you a bottle of ammonium absolutely free and one bottle will last you a long time I probably have used maybe a fourth of the bottle that I have here in this video, and I've cycled over three to 400 gallons of aquariums with it. And once you've added the one and only and the appropriate amount of the ammonium chloride, your tank's gonna be cloudy for about a day. And at that point, the cycling process will start taking place. Now, when I did my testing, I tracked my results and I want to share that with you guys with a click slide that I put together using PowerPoint. And here is that slide. So at the bottom you can see the NH3 which is ammonia, the NO2 and the NO3. And when you look at this you can see the ammonia spike within the first three days. And then it dropped off around day four as that point the NO2 started to pick up and then didn't even really get that high before it dropped off. And then you see the nitrate pick up and then just keep going. Now that's measured on a different scale. So that's why that goes as high as it does. But overall, this tank was completely cycled in seven days. And you're talking about almost 300 gallons of water cycled within seven days. Seven days. Dr. Tim's Aquatics, one and only, just continues to amaze me. 
And I was impressed when I cycled my 5-gallon, my 40-gallon, and 300 gallons. Still impressed. Now, I have one more thing I want to share with you guys before we wrap up today's video. Here's a screenshot of my Apex Fusion. And this is the probe for my ORP. And before I added Dr. Tim's Aquatics one and only, my tank had been sitting at around 150 to 175 ORP. And on January 2nd, I added the Dr. Tim's Aquatics one and only. And you can see that steady incline in my ORP starting January 2nd all the way through January 8th. And that was about the same window that my tank was cycling in. One and only didn't only cycle my aquarium, but it straightened out my ORP situation that I had going on. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you want to take a look at Dr. Tim's Aquatics, uh, there's a link in the description below. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you're new to Mad Hatter's Reef, please hit the subscribe button. If you are a current subscriber of Mad Hatter's Reef, hit that bell. What it's going to do for you, it's going to keep you up to date every time that I upload a video. I want to thank you guys for all that you do, and I'll see you guys next time right here with a brand new video.